So, hi everybody, it's Jonathan Angela Scott, the Big Cat People at home in Nairobi. Beautiful Sunday, we've been blessed with lovely sunny weather. And April is a very special month for Angie and myself. We're both Torians, and Angie's birthday, 27th of April, and mine on the 22nd of April. And that, this year, is a very auspicious year, because it's Earth Day. And to celebrate, we're going to be offering 20% off a 20% sale on our Theramina website, Fine Art Prints. So do please go and check out that. And I'm just going to make sure I get my facts right because 20% off Fine Art Prints on our gallery, Theramina. Uh, the sale ends on Monday, April the 26th. I haven't got my glasses, so I'm struggling here a little bit. Discount automatically applied at checkout, no code required. 10% of all sales will be donated to the Earth Day Network. Now, you can't ask for better than that, can you? So, let's just have a little bit of a chat about what does it mean to be a conservation photographer? Is it just a lot of hot air? I mean, shouldn't we just be taking pictures because we love to actually capture images of the world that we live in, experiences that we share, so as we can actually spread the joy, as we hope we do with our photography. But I think more than ever that the COVID pandemic has put into sharp fo focus that we all need a purpose. We all need to find meaning in our lives. And if you're a professional photographer, if you're a wildlife photographer, well, what does that mean? For Angie and myself, it's meant recording the lives of the big cats. As you know, Big Cat Diary, Big Cat Tales with videography on television and also recording the stories of those big cats and of the whole Mara Serengeti ecosystem, this wonderful place, land of the great migration, in our books and in our drawings. So we've recorded that, we've documented it, but at this point in our lives, and that's one of the reasons why we founded the Sacred Nature Initiative, and in fact, the company has just been registered, so big thumbs up there. We're on the move. But we realize at this point in our life that our photography, it has to count. It has to speak to you with a purpose. Not just so as you look and you say, gosh, isn't that beautiful? But we want to try and capture images which say to you, these landscapes, these breathtaking places like Mara Serengeti, Namibia, these African landscapes and elsewhere, because of course our latest book, Sacred Nature 2, Reconnecting People to Our Planet, takes a global view. But the key thing is to make you think, to inspire you with the beauty and the wonder of the natural world. And then, in a sense, within those images, to pose the question, what can I do? to try and protect what is left of our wild places. Professor E.O. Wilson, a wonderful biologist, author, a doyon, one of David Attenborough's, Sir David Attenborough's great hero, certainly one of ours too, prolific author. One of the things that he did recently was he wrote a book and it was called Half Earth. And in that he said, today, if we're willing to protect half of the natural environment of the wilderness that remains, we can still make things work. We can still come through the climate crisis, this massive loss of biodiversity, this mass extinction, the Anthropocene, as we call this, the sixth great extinction, driven by us, pushing the rest of the life off, off the planet. Now, 50% of what remains. But interestingly, when we were looking at Sir David Attenborough's program, looking back over 60 years of broadcasting, of his extraordinary career as a storyteller, as an advocate for the natural world, and there was a clock that was ticking. There was a time code telling you how much wilderness had disappeared over those 60 years. And we're down by that reckoning to something like 35% of what was there before. Now that doesn't mean, okay, so E.O. Wilson's Half Earth, well, we lost it, we didn't do it. That is about how things have been through time. 
But what E.O. Wilson is saying, act now and protect places like Mara Serengeti and the other great landscapes. Say that it's not just about us, that we can't carry on in the way we've been doing. Then there's still a way of creating a future for the next generation, our children, our grandchildren, like little Michael, our grandson. And so being a conservation photographer for us right now is all about the latest book, Sacred Nature, Reconnecting People, and the previous one, Sacred Nature, Life's Eternal Dance, of looking at the wonder of nature and in a sense, evoking in you the need to respond. And so that's what conservation photography is about. You're linking the power of photography, as they say, one picture worth a thousand words. And you're linking that power to move people through imagery. And you're saying to people, look, this isn't just about how beautiful and lovely and exotic the big cats are. But when you look at them, feel the poignancy of the fact that all of the big cats right across the globe, snow leopards, jaguars, tigers, lions, cheetahs, leopards, clouded leopards, they're all under threat, all cats, skin trade, loss of landscape, even the adaptable leopard, the creature that we've spent so much time that it took me six years to do that first book, The Leopard's Tale. And the marsh lions and leopard tell stories of lions, the ecosystem, the Mara, and of the leopard. You can find those in paperback with Brat, Brat Field Guides, Brat Publishers. And those stories and those pictures evoke a need to act now. So our purpose and the Sacred Nature Initiative picks up on this. Inspire through our imagery, be conservationist through our photography, to educate to give you information about the landscapes that we're evoking. And then we'll be in a position to conserve because as David Attenborough and other people have said, what you don't know about, why would you care? You have to be informed. And that's what conservation photography is about. We need as photographers to constantly be thinking, how can I create a message through the vision of what I'm seeing through the beauty of nature, how can I create a message that moves you to action? Because if ever there was a time from not just making commitments, from taking the commitment and turning it into actions, which is why we've created the Sacred Nature Initiative. And so Earth Day, a celebration of this extraordinary Earth of ours, a celebration of my birthday, a celebration of April, the month in which Angie also has a birthday, and Theramina website, our fine art gallery, 20% off. And that, as I say, I'm just going to remind myself with my piece of paper here, 20% off all fine art prints in the gallery. I mean, if you can't travel right now, how about having a beautiful image, like the latest offering, the beautiful picture of Angie's, of the abstract stripes and shapes of the zebras. Put it on your wall. It'll make you feel better. It'll connect you to nature when it is so much more difficult to travel, although there is light at the end of the tunnel. We will come through this, but we must make an effort to change the world that we live in, to make it a better place for all of life. So, sale ends Monday, April the 26th, by which time I will be well and truly 72 years of age. Discount automatically applied. At checkout, no code required, and 10% of all sales will be donated to the Earth Day Network. So, please dig deep, support our efforts, and I hope that the next week is going to be a glorious one. But remember, move into it with a sense of purpose. Thanks so much, from Angie and myself, from the birthday boys and girls. Take care. Bye-bye.